Hey everybody, Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 2 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2017 Jeep Patriot. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like. I think it looks pretty good. It has almost a factory type look to it and that's because the cross tube is going to be completely hidden behind the bumper and the only thing we're going to see is the receiver tube sticking out. Now again, it is a class two, which means it's gonna give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. And it's gonna be great for some light duty towing. Maybe you have a small jet ski trailer or a small utility trailer you need to move around. But at the same time, it's gonna be really good for bike racks and cargo carriers. That way we can hit the trails with some friends or family or possibly just make some room on the inside with a cargo carrier moving all that gear to the outside. Now, regardless of how you're gonna be using your hitch, all of the accessories are going to mount through the hitch pin hole here on the side. And the hitch is going to accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now these aren't going to come with the hitch, but you can find them here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices and anti-rail devices to keep everything nice and secure and to cut down on the noise coming from the back of the receiver tube. But also, we got to have a spot to hook up our safety chains. Here we have a loop style. It's welded to the bottom of the receiver tube. You can see it's just almost like a rolled steel stock. And if you have most normal size hooks like this, you can see there is plenty of room to get them hooked and take them off. Not have to really worry about hitting the Jeep on the bottom of the fascia or interfering with the pin and clip. Now, obviously, if you're looking for a hitch, weight capacity and what it's going to be able to do is pretty important. So the weight ratings on our hitch are going to be a 300 pound tongue weight. It's a maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube. To put that in perspective, we'll be able to carry a decent amount of bikes with us, maybe two, three bikes with us. Now the hitch is also going to have a 3,500 pound gross trailer at rating. That's how much the hitch can pull, but that does include the trailer and the load we have on it. So with all those numbers in mind, you do want to double check your Patriot's owner's manual because again, those are the ratings for our hitch and we don't want to exceed the manufacturer's rating for our vehicle. I'd like to give you a few measurements. These are going to help you whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper is right about five and a half inches. Now that measurement's gonna help you out when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room to put them in the upright stored position and not make contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening is right about 14 and a half inches. Now with that height, I would recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with a raised shank. That way we can get just a little bit more ground clearance out of it. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's bring it in the shop and go through the installation process together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our Jeep. And at the very bottom of the fascia here, we're going to have several push pin fasteners that we need to remove. So we're going to grab a flat blade screwdriver or a trim panel tool. Now you'll notice there's a little notch on each one of the push pins. You want to take your tool, go underneath that notch, and you want to pry out the center section first. It's going to take all the tension off, and if it comes out, that's perfectly fine. But then once that's out or loosened, we want to come underneath the base and pull the rest of the push pin out. Now the rest of these are going to work that way, so we're just going to work our way across the bottom edge, pulling out all the push pins. Now if we move to the rear wheel well, right behind the rear tire, right at the edge, we're gonna have a couple bolts that are holding that liner in place. So we're gonna grab a seven millimeter socket and we'll pull both of these out. And we're gonna have these two screws on the other side as well. So we'll finish taking this one out and move to the other side and remove those two. So our next step is gonna be lowering our exhaust, but we don't wanna just lower it down without having some kind of support device underneath it. At home, you can use a jack stand, whatever you have available, but you just don't want it to hang down too far. So I'm gonna take a strap and I'm gonna hook it to a secure spot on the frame. I'm actually just gonna kinda of cinch it down so it's nice and taut. That way when we lower it down, we can control it by the strap. So on one side of the muffler here, if we look at the back corner on the driver's side, we're gonna have the hanger, and that's actually connected to a rubber isolator. So we're gonna take a little bit of spray lubricant, spray it on the hanger and the isolator. Just makes it a little bit easier to slide off. Then I can take a pry bar, 
and I'm gonna pry against the hanger itself. And the main goal is just to get that isolator to slide off of there. And the spray lubricant just makes it a little bit easier for it to move. Now that we have this one removed, we'll move over to the other side of the muffler where we're gonna have another hanger and isolator that we need to remove. Now you can see that once we have these lowered, we can lower that strap down a bit, but we may not have as much room as we need. So we can move further up the exhaust and remove another isolator. We just wanna follow the exhaust pipe forward to the next one down the line. Now the next one is going to be pretty far forward, it's going to be about halfway up the vehicle, but it's really easy to access, there's not a whole lot around it. Just again, make sure you have that strap in place so the exhaust doesn't come down too far. And we can lower the exhaust down to where we have plenty of room to work right above it right here. Right above the exhaust we're going to have our heat shield, that's going to be held in place by four studs with nuts on them. So we're gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna pull all of those nuts out. Once you have all the hardware removed, you just gently pull down on the heat shield. And we'll set it aside for right now. Now, if we come to the frame rail, we're on the passenger side over here. You're gonna notice that we have two holes on the inside of the frame. Well, those are actually all the way through the frame, so we have them on the outside as well. And those are gonna be our two mounting locations on the passenger side. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab one of the long hex bolts out of our kit. We're gonna follow it up with a flat washer. And we'll come from the outside of the frame and we're gonna pass them through, but Instead of having the bolt go all the way through, we want to leave room for our hitch to be put in place. So you just want it to be nice and even or pretty close to poking through. Again, that way we have room for our hitch to fit through and fit into the inside of the frame rail. Now we're going to do that for the other hole. And we're going to have the same two mounting locations on the driver's side frame rail. So we're going to put that hardware in place as well. Now with an extra set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch up. I do want to mention that we're only going to get one piece of hardware in place right now. That's going to be the forward mounting holes. So we're going to lift it up, kind of rotate it to where we can get those forward bolts lined up. You want to push them through the frame and that'll allow the hitch to kind of hang by itself. And we want to loosely apply one of the flange nuts, just hand tight for now. They don't need to be very tight but just enough so that our hitch isn't gonna fall down. So now that we have our hitch loosely in place, obviously it's not gonna be pointing down like this, but it allows us to hang our hitch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it up to where it just touches the fascia here. We're not gonna be pushing on it or anything, but we'll rotate it up. Then I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna mark where the outside edges of my hitch are. And then it'll give me a reference point of how wide I need to trim my fascia. And then if we look at our instructions, they are gonna give you a diagram that gives you a rough idea of how you need to trim. So I'm gonna follow those measurements and measure up and then connect all my lines and we can trim out that section. Now, whenever you go to trim out your fascia, you can use just about whatever you have. You can use a utility knife, you're gonna to wanna to make several scores, not pressing too hard, and then eventually just make small passes that keep going a little bit deeper. You can use a pair of uh, tin snips or a rotary tool like this. I do suggest that you trim a small amount, probably less than you think you need to, because we can always come back and take a little bit more material off, but we can't put it back. So I always like to trim as small as humanly possible. And we can always come back with a file or a razor knife 
clean up any of this excess plastic and possibly trim out a little bit more if we need to. But now we can just take our hitch, we can rotate it up. We're gonna push those bolts through the frame and then loosely get a flange nut in place. Again, they don't need to be real tight. We just wanna make sure that hitch stays in the position that we put it. We'll do the same thing on the other side. But now that the hitch is loosely in place, I'm gonna grab a 19 millimeter socket and wrench or a three quarter inch socket and wrench. And we're gonna tighten up all of our hardware. And you wanna make sure you come back with a torque wrench and torque all your hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. Now you may or may not have to hold the nut with a wrench maybe on there tight enough to where the bolt will tighten up. But it's a good idea to have that wrench on hand in case it does start spinning. We're gonna go through and continue in tightening down all of our hardware until it's all torqued to the specification. And line up our heat shield and replace the factory hardware that we removed earlier. Then we can get ready to put our exhaust back in place. I always like to spray a little more lubricant on each one of the hangers. And then I'll actually lift up, tighten that strap so I don't have to hold it while I'm getting each one of the hangers back in. Then we can put all those fasteners back at the bottom of the fascia. With these push pins, you want to make sure that center section is either completely out or sticking out. We'll push the base in and then push the center section in to lock it down. Once you have all your fasteners back in place, that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Kurt Class 2 Custom Fit Trailer Receiver on our 2017 Jeep Patriot.